All right, hello class. So this is going to be your flipped lesson on momentum. So throughout the next couple slides, you get an idea of what momentum is and the things that have affected it and the law of the conservation of momentum. So let's start off. So momentum, according to the definition, you'll see multiple definitions, it says it's the product of an object's mass and velocity. So that sounds kind of fancy. Um, so I kind of sum it up in my own words. What momentum is to me, and I guess to a lot of other people too, it's how hard it is to stop an object, or how hard an object will hit another object. So you can kind of think of it like that. So if an object is going really quick and it's hard to stop, that's going to have a lot of momentum, or it's also going to hit something really, really hard. So that is to me how I would sum up what momentum is, how hard it is to stop an object, or how hard an object will hit another object. So let me show you. So if you look at this picture here that I'm about to show you, there's two things that affect momentum. So here is a very common example, someone playing football and this guy getting hit by another player. So obviously the player in the black had a lot of momentum able to knock over the player in the white. So the thing I want you to think about right now though is there's two things that affect the momentum. Basically what two things could have happened that would make him hit this player a little bit harder. So the two things that would make him have more momentum and hit him even harder, harder is the mass of the person. So if the person had a lot more mass, if he was a much bigger football player, he would have hit him even harder. Or if he was traveling even faster than he already was, that would make him hit him a whole lot harder as well. So the two things that affect the momentum of an object are how big they are and how fast they're going. So the bigger the object, the more momentum and the faster the object or the more velocity it has, the more momentum it has as well. So there's a mathematical formula to find the or to find the momentum of an object. It's pretty easy. So make sure you copy this down in your notes. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Simple as that. Momentum is given by the symbol P. So this is the physics equation P equals mv. So P is momentum, m is mass, and v is velocity. As far as units, really the main unit you're going to use here is just a mass and a velocity together, so it kind of looks a little bit messy. So an example would be kilogram meters per second, which I know is kind of a big unit. There's no exact unit for momentum. You're just going to combine mass and the velocity. So it would be a kilogram meters per second, gram meters per second, or something like that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to kind of take an example here. Um, pause this video after I give you the question, see if you can figure it out, and then just double check to make sure you got the right answer here. So the first one I said, if there's a 60 kilogram halfback, which is a football player, moving eastward at nine meters per second. The question is, what is that um, momentum of that halfback? So go ahead and pause this video if you need to do the math. Okay, so if you did it right, you should have got 60 times nine, and you get 540 kilogram meters per second. For this one here, take a look at it, pause it. All right, so your momentum would be 1,000 times 20, which would be 20,000 kilogram meters per second. Last one, in case you need another example. 40 times 2, 80 kilogram meters per second would be the momentum for these examples. All right, so now it's not necessarily it's so much math. I want you to also do the same thing, though. Pause if you need to and try to think of the answer and then play, and I'll give you the answer. So a car has 20,000 units of momentum. So here they didn't say kilogram meters per second. They said 20,000 units of momentum, which you'll see sometimes, too. So the question is, what would be the new momentum if you doubled the velocity? And the answer here would be that the momentum would also be doubled. If you triple the velocity, the momentum would also then be tripled. If you doubled the mass, the momentum would be doubled. And if you doubled both of them, you'd end up with four times momentum, two times times two, so four times. So it's really pretty easy in that sense. Double the velocity, double the momentum, double the mass, double the momentum. They're directly proportional. Alright, now things get a little bit interesting. There's this thing called the conservation of momentum. And as you can read on the screen, it says 
basically the total momentum of the objects before collision is equal to the total momentum of the objects after a collision. So basically the whole idea here is that if you have one object hit another object or collide with another object or pick up another object, the total momentum will still be exactly the same. So let me show you an example here. All right, so you've all seen a Newton's cradle before, hopefully. It's the idea that if you swing one, there has to be one on the other side having the exact same momentum. So this Newton's cradle is just a very common example of uh, conservation of momentum, because the same on the right, same on the left. It has to be maintained. And they keep going on and on, and you are more than welcome to Google Newton's cradle to see some more examples if you'd like. But that's just kind of the intro to conservation of momentum. Now let's get a little bit more complicated than just simply Newton's cradle. So if we go back here. So this here, it goes pretty quickly. So I wouldn't, I don't think it would be a bad idea to pause this and make sure you take a look at it. But I'll talk you through it and hopefully you get the idea. So basically you have this cart that's traveling at a certain speed in the beginning. You see in the beginning the cart is traveling at 60 centimeters per second. But then as soon as you add more mass to it, the car has to slow down because it has to have the same momentum. So in the beginning, when it doesn't have the brick on it, it's 60 meters per second, and it's mass of one, so the momentum of that car was 60 kilogram centimeters per second. But then as soon as you add the brick on it, the mass goes up, so the velocity has to go down. So what I'd recommend is take a look at this, pause this, so you really take a look at the numbers, but the main message here is that when you add more mass to something, its velocity has to go down so that its momentum stays exactly the same. So in the beginning it had 60 kilogram uh, centimeters per second, in the end it has 20 and 40, so still a total of 60. We'll talk about this in class, but please make sure you get the idea that the momentum stays the same. It's just that it has to slow down in order for that to make sense. We'll talk more about that. All right, and the final example I want to show you kind of along the same idea is this very kind of scientific um, demonstration and I'll put a link on here if you want to play around with this but same idea so this ball starts moving has a momentum of one it hits and collects the other ball and now they both have a momentum of 0.5 and 0.5 so still momentum of one I'll show you again but they had to slow down because now they have combined mass the mass got higher so now they had to slow down you may have also seen something like this, and we'll get into elastic and inelastic um, momentum. Like at a pool, uh, a pool game. So you shoot a pool ball at one, it hits the other, okay, and it goes at exactly the same speed and maintains exactly the same momentum. If the pool ball were heavier, it'd have to go a little bit slower, and then honestly, the math gets pretty complicated if we start changing the masses. But the main message is it stays the same. The momentum has to be exactly the same. So we'll do a couple practice problems in class with this. So like I said, I'll put the link for this on here if you want to play around with it. But your goal when you come into class is to answer these questions. What is momentum? What affects the momentum of an object? What is the conservation of momentum? And make sure you can give a couple examples of conservation of momentum. All right, good luck. See you in class.